Welcome to this video where we're finally going to be talking about autogen. It's been a while that I've been working on this and I was basically seeing if it was actually any good and also learning how to install it, etc, etc. I finally managed to install it properly without Conda. I don't really like Conda. It's too complicated for me. I just don't understand it. However, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can play around with autogen with zero programming experience. Now, I only just noticed this today. If you actually go on resources on microsoft.github.io slash autogen, again, everything is going to be in the description as usual. This helpful little um, document will have everything in. Just go to resources and click playground. And if you've been watching my videos for a while, or if you know the OpenAI playground, you will be familiar with this. Now, we need to do a couple of things first. We need to input some data from our OpenAI. So we are going to be using OpenAI just because, um, yeah, I don't really use, I don't have a good enough machine for local models, LLMs. So we'll click on API keys, get rid of one API key because I already have too many. Don't bother pausing the video and writing this secret key down. I am going to delete it after this video. So we'll create a secret key here, then we'll press copy and we'll put this right here. I would also recommend saving this. Actually, you don't have to because it'll be saved here. Never mind. And then click on playground, click on chat, choose the best chat model that you have. I would recommend GPT-1106 preview if you have it because it's cheaper than GPT-4. Copy this as well and put this into model name. You do not need the open AI base URL yet, but if you want to know what it is, it's right here. It's, uh, you can Google it like that. And then what we want to do is we want to click on run code. Yes, round robin is fine. Scroll down a little bit and put research six agents. This adds a load of agents. And then what you can actually do is you can start it off by just saying hello, for example, and it will actually start to run. As you can see here, I did already do this. So we'll start a new task here and we'll say hello again. It just keeps doing the same thing over and over. This is one of the problems I have with um, this kind of model and also the playground. So what I'm going to show you how to do is how to actually put this into a Python um, script. So at the bottom where it says agent examples, you can do control A, control C, and then we need to head on, on over to Visual Studio Code. Before we do this, I'd recommend downloading Python 3.15. I will also leave a link to this in the description like this. You cannot use Python 3.12. I didn't know this. I just spent an hour trying to make this video, not understanding why it wasn't working when it was working at work today. The reason was I was using Python 3.12 because I just had to reinstall my computer. A couple of other things that you might need. This actually depends on whether you bought your computer from a shop or not, um, or whether you bought it from eBay like I did. So you'll need Rust, and you will also need uh, Visual CPP build tools, which is uh, C++ build tools for Visual Studio Code. You also need this. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's everything you need, actually. So once you're on Visual Studio Code, you also need Visual Studio Code, of course. We're going to file, open folder, right-click anywhere, new folder. Doesn't exist, just because I'm running out of words to use as my folder names. And we'll right-click here, new file, hi.py. And then we'll head on over back to the um, to the playground. Now you can just play with the playground here if you want. You can have fun with this. It's all good. It's all groovy. However, I m would much rather have this inside a Python script just because it doesn't pressure you into you know answering within 60 seconds and things like that. Once you've played with the playground, you'll see exactly what I mean. So once we're here, the first thing you want to do is you want to go to terminal, new terminal, and you want to do uh, pip install py autogen, py autogen. This will say it's already installed, et cetera, et cetera, because I've already done it, of course. And then once that's finished, you want to do pip install py autogen retrieve chat. This installs all of the dependencies at once, which is super, super useful. I tried to install a lot of these dependencies one by one until I realized how to do this all at once. The next thing you want to do is you want to grab all of this data from before. So this is our model name here. This is our OpenAI secret key, which we'll put here. And then the base URL is right here from before, like I told you before. So we'll put the base URL right here. And then I don't know if this is strictly necessary, but I also like to put my model right here. 
Now, if this isn't working, just make sure you've installed Rust, you've installed Visual CPP build tools, and you've reset Visual Studio Code if it's not working. Once you're at this point right here, it should actually work. So we're going to run python high.py. And this should just take us straight into the auto gen. It will say warning the root folder specify config file does not exist. And we are just using the example that comes with auto gen. It's uh, this example right here. So if you want to edit this already, you can already start to edit the code. All you have to do really is edit the prompt here. So we have a user proxy agent or an assistant agent. So I am a noob to autogen, so forgive me if you're a pro and I say some wrong things here. But the way this works, I'm pretty sure, is this acts like you or a user. So you say something to the assistants who then discuss between themselves. And then, for example, here the executor, executor will execute the code to see if it's actually working, because that's what a user would also do. So a few auto gen tricks right here. This basically what you do if you just run this, it just runs through some basic crap and it doesn't actually do anything. What you want to do every time, there's probably a better way to do this again, but you want to click on cache and just delete it. That will restart the run. So next time it's a fresh run. Okay. The one at the bottom here is your first prompt. So I'm going to say, hello. I'm going to try live and make something that will actually, you know, do something useful. Okay. Now I do already have something that's working, but it, it's under wraps. It's secret. I can't really go through it. Um, yeah, just, uh, let's not go into that. Um, <clears throat> one of the important things to note though, is this option right here, human input mode. If you want to have some kind of input, then this is where you would put it. Okay. So a good example here, the name, I'm not sure if the name actually matters. Okay. And this one right here is, it, it just sends the first prompt. Okay. So if you actually look up here, um, it, this is what it gets sent to. It gets sent to chat manager and the admin says hello to the chat manager. Okay. So we're now changing that. We're now changing admin says, um, hello, I want some help writing SEO content. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to change this one right here. Okay, so we'll we'll try this again. This is just a live example. You're gonna have to play with the C sales guy, but guys, SEO agent. This agent creates an outline for an article based on the keyword. I'm just gonna give it. I'm just gonna hardwire a keyword. The keyword. So normally, what you could do is you could say, actually, let, let's try and do this properly. Okay, so your job is to find the keyword from the user, ask the user for the keyword. And then we should just be able to put human input mode equals, and then we'll put always under this, under this here. Should be here, put an indent, change this to always. And then what this should do now that I run this, Again, this is just very rough, guys. You're gonna have to learn a lot of this for yourselves, but I'm just gonna show you what you what you can do. Um, okay. Okay, so that previous example actually didn't work. Like I said, I'm a complete noob at autogen. This video is not really about like how to get good at autogen. It's more just how to start playing with it. So another thing I just learned as well is that you can actually just put what you've got into uh, ChatGPT, so whatever you take from here. And you can actually just say to ChatGPT, can you change this to, you know, whatever you want it to do. So what I said was, can you, can you change this so it works on editing an, an article in Markdown? It took that very literally and just edited an article in Markdown. Then I said it needs to actually write the article as well, not just edit it, then final output should be an article just from keyword input. And this is the end result. Now this didn't work first time because you cannot have a space in this name here. Okay. So be very, very careful of that. Spaces are not allowed in the names of uh, agents. Okay. However, once that's done, I pasted that in and we're now doing Python test.py. Uh, I wrote the keyword here again. I'm not saying this is good 
content or anything like that. I just, I'm just showing you how to get started with auto GPT. Okay. Now I have done this for something much more interesting than this. I will not be releasing that, um, probably for a while, if at all, but it's a niche, uh, kind of searcher and it goes very, very niche into things and checks itself and all that good stuff. So I'm making this video to introduce people to Autogen, show people how to use it, show people how to get familiar with it, show people how to, you know, change their own prompts, etc. And then, you know, eventually, hopefully, I will be able to come back and I'll be able to say, you know, this is now, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm much more advanced at it now, okay? Hopefully, people will learn at the same time as me. We can help each other learn, et cetera, et cetera. I do think that this is the future of something. I'm just not sure what it's the future of right now. It's not probably not the future of writing content. Um, it just makes, you know, 420 words. Of course, it's 420 words in uh, in a bit of time. And now it's literally just wasting my money talking to each other. But this is just the beginning. Now, what I want to try and learn to do is um, adding functions for SEO search, which I will be releasing, okay, if this video does well. And I want to learn how to make it go back to the start and how to make it more autonomous autonomous in choosing topics if i can master these three things okay and also um longer content if i can and also yeah also like internal things from your website and also photos from sitemap maybe if I can make it do all of these things, then Autogen is going to be amazing. However, there's just so many uses for this thing. I'm so excited to dive further into it. I wanted to make this video to explain how to play with Autogen. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. I hope this gets you started. And I hope this is actually like a decent use case instead of just everyone making the same video about how to use it on Google Colab. Thanks for watching and peace out.